Hello. Hello, this is Carrie. This is Ann. Hi, this is Barbara Howard. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I'm just great. And the name of your company is Rubina Design? Yes, it's actually just Rubina, but I go by both. Okay, well let's let's get started talking about Rubina. Now okay. this company, how did you get started as to well first of all give us a good description of what the company what your company does. Okay. Um, well Rubina has just been started this summer actually in June and it is a design company that creates greeting cards and different types of stationery. Um, anything that's printed. And the whole point of it is that I want to incorporate women artisan groups from developing countries into my business model. So, and the reason for that is because many women um, in developing countries have a very unequal status and therefore end up getting pushed into things like sex trafficking and prostitution and other harmful um, professions. So this is sort of an opportunity for them to have an economic outlet um, to be a part of. That's, that is a positive thing. And um, also for the design community here in New York to learn from other cultures and different techniques and things like that. Excellent, excellent. And your background and your education, you went to school for this, correct? I did, yes. I went to undergrad um, in Texas, and I studied architecture and fine arts. And then I came up to New York for graduate school, and I went to Pratt Institute. And I actually studied design management, where it's kind of a mixture of um, design and creative thinking, but a lot of it is business-based and how to use design to be more strategic in different companies. How did you make the decision to make your company more uh, involved in social issues instead of just going for it uh, just to make, you know, to win awards and make a lot of money. What was it that inspired you to reach out more on social issues? Um, actually, it's just a passion I developed um, in grad school. I did my thesis project on um, design management within impoverished countries, and whenever I was looking at different organizations, in these developing countries I was looking at, I noticed that a lot of these nonprofits and government organizations and even churches and things like that, they were using women as kind of like the way to spur development within these countries. And I looked at microfinance organizations who were giving small loans to women to start businesses. I looked at artist-based organizations that were helping train them in skills and uh, different things like that, and it just really sparked my interest, and it made me wonder why women were such a focus. And then the more I looked into it, it the numbers and the research really showed that giving women opportunity goes a lot further um, in helping alleviate some of these huge issues in the world. Mm, good point. Now, were you always talented as an artist, as a child? Were you always very creative? Were you always drawing or sketching? Um, I guess I was. Um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> um, I definitely drew a lot growing up. I, have, I still have some sketchbooks of when I was little, and they're kind of embarrassing to look at now, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I actually moved around a lot as a kid. And I think that is what kind of got me into um, drawing because it was kind of a nerve-wracking thing to move around and you know be yeah. in a new environment and that kind of thing. And so a lot of times, like starting new schools, I wouldn't be able to sleep and so I'd stay up all night and, and draw. And I would just, creativity was my outlet for that. Oh, and okay. I kind of found myself within that. And then just growing up, I was just always interested in it. And I didn't know what I wanted to do in college when I started. And I was like, oh. Maybe I'll do architecture, but I don't really want to do that. So, yeah. And I still kind of feel like I'm figuring out what I want to do, but just, this is something I feel like is in front of me and, and this passion I have and um, just the opportunities I've had to work on my thesis project and just be with, in a community of people that are very encouraging 
um, that's kind of how I ended up where I am right now, starting Rubina. Yeah. Wow. Well, what was your first step when you knew that, okay, I'm going to start a business? Um, what was the first step for you? Well, it's kind of been a slow evolution um, ever since grad school. So that was, I graduated five years ago, and um, I started freelancing during grad school. And so I've just been freelancing ever since as a graphic designer. So I've been working with a bunch of different companies and nonprofits here in New York and um, on a project base basis. Um, and so I kind of was getting... Not that I'm tired of that, but I was kind of getting an itch to kind of make my own thing. Because when you're doing it for someone else, it's always kind of their idea or them kind of spurring the vision for it. And so I wanted to do something that was more my own creation, something that came from the depths of my soul, I guess. And um, But then from grad school, I just had this passion about women's development stuff. And so I wanted to couple to those two things because I, I definitely wanted to make a company that was giving back and that was helping me realize, like, okay, I'm a part of something bigger. This isn't just about me putting a creation out there. And um, it's about me creating something kind of holistically sustainable to help others. Well, I love the cards. You have the greeting cards on your website. My favorite one is Wildflower. I love that one. Yeah, that's a popular one. <laughs> really pretty. Now, how does purchasing your products actually help? How does it, how do you tie that together? Um, well, yes. Yeah, so the cards that you saw online, that's that's my first line of goods. And I started out with a very wide range of, of these greeting cards just to kind of test the market and see what people liked. Um, and so a percentage of my profits right now are going to different women-based um, initiatives. So I'm sponsoring, through my company, Rubina, I'm sponsoring a woman uh, through Kiva, which is kind of like a small lending online portal that you can pick specific entrepreneurs within um, all these different countries, and you can help give them a loan for their business to start. So I'm sponsoring a woman who lives in Ghana right now, Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I'm also working with Women's World Banking, which is they started out with one as one of my clients, my freelance clients, um, <clears throat> doing some pro bono work for them. Um, and then the next round of goods that I make, I'm I'm in the middle of talking to an Indian artisan group that I'll be working to actually produce my next round of goods. Um, so the goal is to make journals and more cards and. And every single time that I make a new line, I want to increase. I want to increase, um, you know, add a add a new product like a journal. Like journals will be this next time, and then um, after that, it could be anything else, maybe personalized stationery and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be working with these artisan groups uh, going forward. So um, within the year. Hopefully by the end of 2010, I will have a new line of products that is either with this Indian artisan group or another group. Um, I'm still in talks with the group, so nothing has been signed or anything yet. But. Okay. Carrie's website is Rubina Design. R U B I N A D E S I G N dot com, and you can go there and go to the shop. Click on Shop, and you'll see the products I was talking about, the greeting cards, and Valentine's Day is coming up right now, but there are other cards, of course, that you could select from. They're really, really pretty. I love them. I love the colors. But you were also saying through Kiva, and that's K-I-V-A dot O-R-G, and that is um, an organization that anyone can go to the website and donate. You can donate as little as $25 and that money can go to help an entrepreneur in a developing country somewhere else in the world. And Carrie, you're, you're sponsoring a woman in Ghana. And what is her business? What does she do? Um, she actually sells shoes and trades shoes. So she goes out. She, I think she lives in a rural area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. But um, 
she goes to the cities and buys shoes and then comes back and sells them. And resells them. Okay. Yeah. 